So here we're checking the embedded base boot requirements, EBBR, right here. And who yeah. are you? Uh, I'm Daniel Thompson. I work at Lenaro in the support and solutions team. Uh, and I'm one of the EBBR committee members. So um, EBBR is a big deal, it's very important, and it's happening right now? Uh, yes, I think so. So um, the, the key thing is we've had fragmentation in the, the embedded boot space for a long, long time, and there have been some significant changes that allow us to, to look at addressing that. And the most significant is that U-Boot, which is one of the most popular embedded bootloaders, has been modified by Alexander Graf to become a uh, EFI implementation, which means most of the embedded community uh, based on U-Boot on Tiano Core can then unify around the same boot architecture. And uh, right here, you're showing some stuff plugged in around here. What yeah, is that? So we've got a bunch of to make. Uh, yeah, we've got a bunch of boards. We've got three embedded, three, four embedded boards, and a big board. So we started with this. this is the developer box. This is here to point out the SBBR. This is your main desktop. It is, yeah, but that's by the by. Yeah. So the, the reason this is here is that um, it's a server-based system and EBBR is um, compatible with SBBR. So any SBBR system is automatically EBBR compliant. So we're trying not to fragment the space, we're staying as aligned as we can to server systems. Um, and then we have four small single board computers um, all running UBIT. So in particular, on two at the front, the Raspberry Pi and the Dragon Board 410C are running mainstream, mainline, unmodified bootloaders that we compiled on Wednesday from the UBIT sources. What is this one? Uh, that's a Pine 64. Pine 64 right um, here. And th that one again, that's connected to this serial console up here. Okay. Um, and if I reboot it, this one is particularly interesting because this is running Linux. This one currently has a stick implementing FreeBSD on it. So we're currently in the bootloader. What's it's happening? about to fetch the EFI payload from the USB disk. In fact, the USB has a media tape, let me try again. Um, it's about to detect the USB stick and fetch the UFI payload from the USB stick. Um, so that's going to come through now. It's not from the storage device again. We'll try a different slot. Uh, sorry, okay. this version of U-Boot only supports the bottom slot, I remember. Yeah, because I, I just got you to reconnect everything. You're just about to... Yeah, yeah, so I did move things a bit. There we go, that's time it's found the storage device. So the storage device has been found, it's in the right slot this time around. Um, that's going to then load an, an equivalent of Grubs. This is a free BSD bootloader, an EFI payload. That's coming up, and then in about 10 seconds time when that finishes, it will be booting the uh, operating system, the kernel from FreeBSD. So, like I said, huge credit to the FreeBSD guys for all their work making this work on the board. We've simply uh, standardized the boot process just ahead of it to make their life easier. So you standardized the boot process ahead of it? So, all these sticks are the unmodified ISO images from the distributions. We've got Debian, OpenSUSE, Fedora, and FreeBSD. Um, and they're unmodified. So we've now provided the means for these embedded boards to load the payload on those USB sticks. After that, all credit goes to the distros for their hard work and for the kernel developers for the upstreaming and everything else. So, so EBBI is simply the matter of getting that first bootloader off the media and into memory. So why wasn't this before, existing before? Uh, <coughs> it's fragmentation. So, so all we're really doing is trying to reduce fragmentation. So it's not, all these boards used to boot an operating system. They all used to boot Linux. Very few of them used to boot FreeBSD, but they all used to boot uh, an operating system, and it all used to work, but they all used to do it in a different way. And that meant that you couldn't take standard things like the Debian installer and have it work. And that's what EBBR is all about. Well, why, why didn't you just agree to have a standard from the beginning? I can say, I mean, it, it's just the way life pans out when you're working in, in ecosystems where there's not, it's not an economic incentive, ultimately. We believe that even when you're not doing distro boot, that you can still save money by having this in your infrastructure because they will standardize upgrade flows. So now we believe the economic stars are aligned that this will now be good economics to implement. And I think previously it wasn't. Good economics. And uh, now everybody is agreeing this is a great standard? The committee certainly believe it is a great standard. Um, I mean, for other people's views on the standards, you have to ask them. We're here to socialize it and to get interest in the specification. Um, ultimately, it's a tiny, tiny extension to EFI. So we are relying on EFI as the base standard. We're simply uh, almost like a profile, a specific way that you might choose to implement it to get some useful, useful effects. And what's your role in that? What do you do? Uh, I'm, I'm a committee member, um, and I also have a few kind of admin and secretarial roles uh, helping the project, looking after the GitHub repositories, things like that. Um, so Dong and Grant kind of run the show, they own the spec. It's a completely open process, you can join the, the meetings which are every Thursday. 
Uh, anybody who wants to come and join, joins those meetings and comes to talk to us a bit how exciting briefing is.